Japan might be living in the future with its neon lights, amazing public transportation, robots, incredible toilets and vending machines. After all, Japan is a country like no other. But not all is as it seems. After traveling to Japan over 20 times as a tourist, here are 14 things I hate about traveling in Japan. Some are small, others are bigger, and some just annoy me. Number 14. Paper towels. When eating street food or taking out food, it's common to not be given a napkin or a paper towel. Although this is not the case all the time, it's more common than not. And if you're a messy eater like I am, then this can become a problem. Although restaurants often provide oshibori, which are small towels for hand cleaning, paper napkins are still rather rare. This one still catches me out. Number 13. Early mornings at some accommodation. The sun rises so early in Japan, especially in the summer months, but the thing that I hate the most is that some accommodation, especially traditional inns, many times do not offer blackout curtains, meaning your room will be as bright as midday, waking you up very early, especially if you're anything like me and you're a light sleeper. I now carry an eye mask just in case, but boy oh boy do I hate it when I forget it. Number 12. Pillows. I'm gonna say it. Japanese pillows suck. It probably took me at least four trips to get used to them. Not all accommodation offer these buckwheat pillows that are filled with hulls, the harder outer casings of buckwheat seats, making them feel like you're sleeping on a beanbag. Some people love them, some people hate them. I can easily do without them. Give me a feather filled soft pillow any day of the week. Thank you very much. Number 11, not a surprising one, but trash cans. It's very well known fact that Japan has a lack of trash cans and although I've become accustomed to it, I hate, hate the fact that I end up carrying trash around with me until I finally find a trash can or visit a konbini or a train station. Sometimes easier said than done. Number 10, Japanese food for dummies. Let me explain, okay? As a frequent traveler to Japan, this one really gets to me. It's not uncommon to find that English menus in Japanese restaurants sometimes have fewer items listed compared to the Japanese version. And as I recently discovered with a fluent Japanese speaking friend, they can even have completely different menu items too. Now, I understand that there might be translation challenges and I also understand that Japanese menus might change more frequently to make use of seasonal ingredients and that that might make it hard for restaurants to keep up with the English translations. But the thing that gets to me the most is the assumption that certain traditional or local dishes may not suit the taste preferences or dietary restrictions of international visitors. Give me a Japanese menu with Google Translate any day. And on that note, why don't you unlock your internet mobile data connection by using my Sakura Mobile affiliate link, the link is in the description, or by using an easy to scan QR code. I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you, and you'll receive a product that's trusted by many in the Ninja Monkey community, which will allow you to translate those menus and get the authentic Japanese items. Okay, number nine, expensive taxis. Would you have guessed that taxis in Tokyo and across Japan are generally regarded as expensive? The high cost is as a result of the initial fare, which increases with distance and additional charges such as late night surcharges and toll fees. While taxis can be convenient, especially during late hours or when carrying heavy luggage, their use in urban areas like Tokyo and Osaka can become particularly pricey due to traffic and longer travel times. I really need to think twice before using a taxi, especially as a solo traveler. Number eight, early closing times and opening hours. If you are an early riser and want to head out of the door and make the most of your day or your jet lag, then you need to be aware that most doors and tourist sites won't open until around 10 a.m. And if you're looking for coffee, then chains are your best bet for an early coffee with most independent cafes not opening until between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. But what I hate the most is the closing times of a lot of tourist sites, especially temples that might close between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. with the last entry potentially being half an hour before that. So here's a pro tip. 
some areas that have closing times like shrines might actually be on a public path and these areas will have access 24 hours a day like Fushimi Inari in Kyoto so why not make the most of your jet lag and head to these super early just remember to be respectful and follow the signs make sure you never trespass okay we're at the halfway mark and we're getting close to those juicy ones that really get to me but before we get there here's something that i do not hate and that is you subscribing to my channel and hitting the like button it's the ultimate appreciation and it really helps the videos reach so that others can see it too help the channel grow so i can continue making more videos anyway back to the things that annoy me number seven rooms with no view and smoking rooms come on japan i thought we were living in the future not a deal breaker japan's rooms are small and that's not something that i hate they are usually clean and efficient and have everything that i need apart from the view that is obviously depending on the type of accommodation that you're staying at it's quite common for smaller japanese hotels to not have a view looking out at an inner well or simply at a dark wall not a deal breaker but something that does occasionally annoy me also on the topic of hotel rooms did you know that many japan hotels still have smoking rooms so make sure you double check the type of room that you book or you might end up in a tobacco stinking room now that i can say i totally hate number six coins carrying loose change in coins in japan is common paper money starts a thousand yen often meaning an abundance of coins for smaller transactions this often leads to a wallet full of heavy clinking coins especially if you pay without the exact change my tip here is to try to top up a Suica card or an icy card and use it as much as possible to reduce the amount of coins you'll be walking around with in your pocket number five on that note okay i'm being picky with this one but i hate it when vending machines don't accept Suica or IC cards. I love vending machines. It really does make Japan feel like it's in the future. They're so convenient, offering cold and hot drinks, and sometimes a variety of other things too. However, I hate it when a vending machine doesn't accept Suica or IC cards for payment. Having to fiddle around looking for change, or even worse, breaking a 1,000 yen bill to get even more change. I guess it's a good way of using up those loose coins, if you're organized, that is. <laughs> Number four, hand dryers. In Japan, hand dryers are not commonly found in public restrooms, as they are in some other countries. Instead, you'll be lucky to find paper towels. Quite uniquely, many people carry their own small towels or handkerchiefs for drying their hands. And although things are slowly changing, it's still common and an annoyance and I am now trying to remember to carry my own small towel, but I hate having to carry something extra. Number three, national holiday crowds. You really do not want to get caught out or at least plan around Japan's national holidays, especially Golden Week and Obon. But even the smaller public holidays like Culture Day, Mountain Day can make things very crowded with packed train stations and tourist spots. So, try to stick to one area and not travel too far out, especially to popular day trips on a national holiday. Add additional time to transit and be aware of potentially having to wait longer as a result of full buses and trains. Number two, the last train. Did you know that for such a modern metropolis, Tokyo's trains run between 5 a.m. and around midnight? Well, it always surprises me that the last train is so early adding an added stress of keeping an eye on the time and at times making me choose between an expensive taxi ride home or waiting around for the first train at around 5 a.m don't get caught out or you'll be hating this too and finally number one and i think you'll agree with me on this one squad toilets why do they exist <laughs> Did you know that about 42% of toilets in major tourist spots in Japan are squat style, requiring a squatting position, which can be unfamiliar and uncomfortable to many, especially those with physical limitations. Whilst these toilets are functional, their physical demands often pose difficulties. Many times I've had to resort to this style of toilet, especially in more rural areas and older train stations. I just simply hate them 
they are usually my last resort. <laughs> okay team, I want to make it clear that I think that Japan is a great country. It's why I return over and over again. But that's not to say it's a perfect country. I don't think such a country actually exists. Some of these hates are my personal opinions of things that still get to me after traveling many times to the country. And I totally understand that for a first time traveler, things will be very different. The honeymoon period will likely mean that you won't even notice many of these little things. But now that I've brought it to your attention, I hope that you'll be better prepared for your trip to Japan. And if there's anything that you'd like to add to the list of hates, let me know in the comment section. Hope you found this one useful. If you have, then please subscribe, click or tap. It only takes a few moments and it will help the channel grow. And for more casual content, then check out my second channel, The Happy Gaijin. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Arigatou gozaimasu. Gracias. Thanks. Bye.